Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno. Welcome to episode 63 of Game Programming. Alright, so today we're going to talk about collision detection. Yep, that's right. Collision detection. Um, probably the single most heavily requested topic um, for me to cover ever has been collision de detection. And I can kind of get why. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I have no idea why. It's so easy. But um, I, I do kind of get why you guys, you know, would want to, would want you know, I guess, learn how to do it. Obviously, it's very important to making games. But also, in my opinion, it's probably one of the most hardest, easier things to do in game programming. Because it's kind of hard to to visualize. Like, if you were to go out and be like, all right, I'm not going to look at any resources. I'm just going to I'm just gonna make collision detection from scratch logically in my head, and I'm going to write it down on a piece of paper and then implement it into my code. And the answer is, it'll probably work, right? Unless you're, you know, um, kind of, I don't know how to put this in a polite way. Unless you're not educated, let's just say, it'll probably work, right? But it's probably not gonna be the most efficient way to um, actually handle collision. I remember the first time that I actually made collision detection, I didn't look at any resources. I just said logically in my head, all right, well, you know, if this part of this square collides with this square, you know, if this part of this square exceeds the X boundaries of another square, you know, and do the same for every other corner, pretty much. Um, if that happens, then there is collision. And then, but now, then we've got the other issue of we've detected collision, but there has to be a collision response, right? We've detected collision, but we have to, we have to kind of react to it. You know what I mean? So detecting collision is one thing, it's pretty easy to do, actually. It's just, you know, if if this is inside this other object, then we've got a problem, you know, that's that's a collision. But then there's also the, the aspect of it that, okay, we can't move in that direction now. How do we make the player not be able to move in a certain direction based on if there's collision there or not? And again, the answer is extremely simple, and it's literally one line of code. I'm not even going to lie. It's one line of code. That is the most, like, that is, that is pretty much... That's basic collision detection right there. Um, but we're not actually going to do that. We're going to do a bit of a more advanced way. And I'll show you guys the simple way first, by the way, so that you guys can wrap your head around how it roughly works. And then I'll lead into the more advanced way. But um, it's just more accurate. That's why we're going to do it in a more advanced way, not just because I want to. But um, it's, yeah, it's it's actually not that hard. It, it probably sounds hard and feels hard, but it's not that hard. Okay, so right now, um, what we've got in our game is we've got these things here, right? And let me quickly... Okay, good. I was worried I would run out of disk space because I always sometimes do that when I'm recording. Uh, but it's all right, I got 3.65 gig left on my, uh, my, on my main drive. Okay, so um, what we've got right now is we're kind of just prancing all over this um, all over these tiles. And remember, we've actually set these tiles to this, uh, I don't know what this is, this wall, I guess. These walls, we've actually set them to be solid. So if we just get out of this, we expand our little, um, level thing, our tile folder, and we've got a bunch of tiles here, like, um, in, in, in spawn level, we've got wall tile. And in wall tile, you know, public boolean solid, it returns true. So in other words, that is true. I mean, if we look at something like grass tile, that actually doesn't have a solid um, method, I guess. It doesn't have a solid method um, because by default, if it doesn't have a solid method, it looks like it looks at the um, the superclass, and you can see here that it returns false, right? Um, same with floor tile, uh, but wall tile and hedge tile, they actually return true and solid, and that's actually breakable. But I don't know. We so you haven't implement, implemented that yet, but um, yeah, so they're solid right now. Hedge and wall tiles are solid. Um, so that's that's the first step, right? The first step in collision detection is actually to identify what tiles are solid and what are not solid. Why does my mouse drop out of, I don't know, my mouse kind of stops working sometimes. That's weird, I haven't seen that before. Anyway, um, yeah, right? So the first step is actually um, defining which tiles you know, you can't pass through and which tiles you can pass through. So this tile, obviously we can't pass through, right? We've set it to, to return true. So in other words, it is solid. We've set it to be solid. Now let's go into our mob class, right? And if you guys remember, the mob class is the class that actually handles the move method. So in other words, if we want to move a mob, if we want to move an object, well, if we want to move a mob, then 
we have to, you know, that's that's where that move method comes from. If we want to move a mob, we go through the mob class. This is this is how it happens. And we've even set up a temporary collision thing here, right? We've pretty much just laid down all the groundwork for this. We've said that if there is no collision, so if collision equals false, right? This is a, it's referring to this boolean here, by the way, it's currently returning false. But if it equals false, then yeah, let's advance in those directions. But if there is a collision, then you cannot move. So that's kind of collision response already done, right? And that's obviously a very simple way of doing it, but that's kind of how it works. All right, so how do we actually, you know, stop ourselves from moving through those collidable tiles? Um, yeah, so how do we actually, you know, stop our player from being able to pass through these tiles? Um, the way we actually do that is obviously we need to run an algorithm here in um, the collision method, right? Because Basically, if we return true for this collision, then we're just not going to be able to move. And you can see that here that we just we can't move anywhere, right? Because collision is returning true. Um, but what we want to be able to do is only return true in certain cases. So in other words, we want to control this this boolean value here, right? And I'm just going to call it solid equals false for now, and let's return solid. All right. So what I've done here is I've just you know created a variable out of it, but um. We want to be able to control this boolean. We, we, we want to be able to say that based on where we are moving to, you know, if that tile is solid, then look, don't let us get into that tile because it's solid, right? So what we kind of want to say is that if I'm moving this way, hypothetically, well, I am actually moving this way, but if I'm moving this way and I get to here, then let's look ahead of where I'm moving, which is this tile. But wait, that tile is solid. So we can't move further. Return false. And that's the idea. Honestly, that is the idea. So we want to be like, if we move that way, then, you know, don't, don't let us go there. Um, and the other way that we can actually um, picture this as well, a lot of people make a mistake of saying, if the tile that I'm currently on is a solid tile, don't let me move. And that doesn't really work when you think about it, because it's like, well, if you're already on a solid tile, like you shouldn't even be there in the first place. If you're already there, it's kind of too late. Like you're already on it, so we, I'm not gonna let you out of it now. It's a solid tile, you can't move now. So we wanna kinda of look ahead. And how do we, so how do we look, how do we look ahead, right? That's, that's another question, how do we look ahead? And if you see over here actually, the direction in which we move is defined by x, a, and y, a, right? They are either negative one, zero, or one. And negative one means we're moving, you know, in X's case, we're moving left. Zero means we're not moving anywhere. And Y means we're, we're moving right. So if we come over here, right, we've already got a way of actually looking forward. X, A, and Y, A. It tells us which direction we're going in. So in other words, over here, if we just simply add X, A to X, we're going to get the tile that we're about to be in, right? Right. So one thing I'm going to do is actually feed in x a and y a as parameters into this collision method because I want to be able to use those variables to figure out where we're going and the tile that we're future that will be in the, in the future so that we can run a check through it and say if it's you know if it's solid, then return false, um, or rather return true. So over here, the way that we kind of check that is, and I'm trying to break it down, because like, this is one line of code and I want to explain it as much as I can, but basically if level.getTile, right, and what level.getTile is, is it returns to us all of the properties of a particular tile. So if level.getTile, right, and which tile are we getting here? We're getting tile x plus xa and y plus ya. So in other words, x is the current position of where we are in terms of x, and XA is where we're going to move in terms of X. So our future location in terms of X, right? Um, what, same with Y, right? Y is our current location in Y, and YA is where we're going to move in terms of Y, so up or down. Um, and that's obviously left and right, left or right. So if level.getTile, and we're getting this particular tile here, if it is solid, right, then solid equals true. Oops. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is collision detection, honestly. So let's run this and see what we get. Okay, so we get a crash. That's okay. 
the reason we get a crash, and I actually forgot to mention this, was that we don't actually have level set up, right? If we actually control click on level, it leads to this. And obviously level doesn't equal anything, so we get a null pointer exception. What we need to do is actually initialize the, en the level inside the entity class. So what I like to do is make a, um, a method called init, it stands for initialize, right? And all we'll do here is it, it will actually take a parameter, the level object parameter. So this dot level equals level. And that's it, right? So in other words, the parameter that we that we will feed in here will be set to this. And this, of course, we use here. So let's go back to our game.java class. That's our main class. Um, and over here, you see that we actually do have a player right here. And player is obviously a mob. So what we can do here is we can say player.init and we can actually set level equal to this level. And of course that level is actually equal to level.spawn. So in other words, it is equal to something. And if we run this now, we don't get a crash. All right, so let's check this out. Ready, ready, ready. Oh, we passed right through it. Now, why did that happen? I wonder. Now, the reason that that happened is actually pretty simple. I love how I just kind of mess with you guys. They were probably expecting it to solve. Um, <laughs> if we actually check out what this value equals, so if we just quickly print out x plus xa, and just for good measure, we'll also print out y plus ya. Um, if we print out those variables when we move, we actually get, oh, wow, like look how big they are, 10,000 and 200. Why are they so big? And the reason they're so big is they're returning it in terms of pixels, not tiles. And if we go to get tile method, you know, we're actually looking at a particular tile, right? So tiles obviously is in terms of, um, ah, tiles is actually in terms of, what, what do we even, hang on a minute. Where is tile set exactly? Um, I guess it will be in spawn level. Yeah, so here tiles are set to width times height, which at the moment is 64 by 64. So of course that freaking exceeds it. It was not actually 64 by 64, but anyway. Um, it's set to tile level precision, right? But we're talking about... Um, pixel level precision here clearly. So what we actually need to do is convert it back into tile level precision. And the way that we can do that is pretty simple. We can um, we can simply grab x plus xa, put it in brackets and divide it by, you know, how big our tiles are, which is 16. And that's it. That is how simple it is. So now, take two, right? Um, now if we do this, okay, first of all, let's get rid of this printing thing. But actually, just to prove a point, if I do quickly copy that and put it here. All right. Then you can see that, look at that, we're now in tile level precision. So if I go here, look at that, I cannot go there. If I go down, look at that, I can't can't go down. Um, if we actually come up here as well, so I can prove to you how it works. If we go here, oh, look at that, we cannot go past here, right? If we go that, we can't, we can't, do, can't go there, can't go there. Look at that. It's working brilliantly. Now, one thing that is, there's two kind of problems with this collision and why I wouldn't just leave it like this. This is basic, so you guys can kind of see how it works, right? But um, one thing that we can't do is if we are colliding here, we can't actually move up and down while we're holding that key, right? It stops us from doing that. And the reason it stops us from doing that is because, well, we've already collided. So as long as we're trying to go that way, we can't move. But what we want to kind of do is say that, okay, the collision is horizontal, so let us still move vertically. That's one thing we need to do. The other thing we need to do is actually make this a bit more precise. So you can see that we have don't really have control here. In fact, that didn't even work because we went in the right place, as you can see here. Um, yeah, so there's a few kind of quirks with this thing. Obviously, the basis is it works fine, but I want to. I, I like to make it just a bit more accurate. Um, and we can actually do that next time. And I promise that the next episode will be released in like a few days. It won't be like a few weeks, a couple weeks. It'll be a couple days. Um, but yeah, that's basically how collision works. So I suggest that you guys um, kind of go through that and see if you can understand it fully. If you guys do come up with a, with a solution, by the way, I, um, I actually have a, a subreddit called The Cherno, big surprise. But um, 
it's over here, right? And I do go through this occasionally, but people post stuff here like, I don't know, like alternatives actually, I haven't read that obviously, but you can see most of these links are purple. So, hey, I do read it. In fact, I've even upvoted this link. Um, probably haven't helped them with it though. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, um, this is this is a subreddit. And what you guys can do is you can obviously submit um, posts. And if you submit a post, you can share your way of collision detection. Um, or if you've got a problem, you can also submit that obviously, and people will help you out because people here are really nice, unlike me. So... <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, the point is, if you guys do come up with a um, with a with a with what you think is a more accurate way of actually dealing with collision, post it here. You know, I'll check it out, and maybe other people can check it out as well. And maybe they'll share their ways, and maybe we can get an get an even better way of handling collision than what I've got right now. Um, obviously, next time, regardless of if any posts actually occur, I'll actually share with you guys the way that I obviously make this more accurate and that's probably the way I'll do it anyway because it works 100% of the time and it's really really nice but um that's rough collision detection just because I wanted to bring it down bring it down a notch for you guys so that you could really understand collision in one line of code um because it is kind of confusing to wrap your head around but that's kind of how it works anyway guys I'll see you guys next time on episode 64 again a couple days um because I've actually got a week off uni now because of Easter yay um, <laughs> anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and I'll see you guys next time. Later guys.